moist. That's an interesting word, right? Look at that beautiful color. That. We all celebrate Memorial Day in, in different ways. I think it's safe to say that most of us at least include some type of cooking, barbecue, backyard feast, get together, whatever. But it's important that we don't lose the true meaning of Memorial Day. And that's for all the service members that have served and, and given the ultimate sacrifice and that's their lives. And, and not just that, but their families too. I am going to do a pretty epic cook today. We're talking about a competition grade Snake River Farms Gold Wagyu brisket and a massive one. Let's get this cook started. We're gonna use the Lone Star Grills offset smoker. So before we throw this brisket on the smoker, let me rewind in time to show you what I did to this brisket last night. Now, if you've never tried a Snake River Farms brisket, I seriously encourage you to give it a shot. They sell competition grade meat at fairly reasonable prices. I very rarely get something that I'm unhappy with from Snake River Farms. This video is not sponsored. I bought this brisket with my own money, just passing along my experience. And this 15 pound monster has quite a bit of fat on it. If I had to criticize Snake River Farms, uh, I'd say that would be it. You know, it's just a whole lot of fat. However, I understand how the industry works and a brisket is gonna have a fat cap. Some are just thicker than others. With my Victor Knox sharp bony knife, I go ahead and trim the fat cap down so it's only about a quarter of an inch or so in thickness. Now there's definitely gonna be areas that are thicker than others, but in general, on average, that's what I'm looking for. I'm also looking for any hard fat. Hard fat just kind of sticks out, it's like gristle. And I wanna go ahead and trim that off because it's not gonna render the same way as the rest of the fat. Flipping the brisket over, I go ahead and take off any fat that I can get off of the meat side of this brisket. I don't wanna cut into the meat, but I do wanna trim the edges, make some nice straight lines, and get any visible, easy to get fat off of it. Fat is flavor, so we don't wanna to take too much fat off. We don't wanna to be too aggressive with this. Now there is an area on most briskets, or at least whole packer briskets, where you have both the point and the flat. And where those two kind of come together on the end, there's a really large area called the deckle. And it's just solid fat, and then most of it is just solid hard fat. So although you don't want to create a cavity or a hole in the brisket so that it cooks evenly, you do want to be more aggressive with trimming that fat down. We're gonna go with the Bearded Butcher's Black Seasoning as well as Malcolm Reed's Brisket Seasoning. And the two together are absolutely a perfect marriage. A brisket this size needs lots of rub, so I make sure that I get plenty of it on there, pat it in, let it set for just a little bit, and then put it in the refrigerator overnight. You're gonna want a minimum of 12 hours, but preferably more like 24. That way this brining method will pull some flavor down into the inside of the meat, as well as help make sure your brisket is juicy. Trust me, you don't want to skip that step. It's an important one, so put that little bit of extra time into it. It's like brining your meat. You know, it's gonna help bring out those flavors and help make sure you have the most moist brisket you can get. Moist, that's an interesting word, right? And what I did this morning is I took the brisket out, I put it on the counter, just kind of let it come up to room temperature. And when this pit gets up to 225 degrees, we're gonna go ahead and put the brisket on and get a little closer to some smoky goodness. We're going 225 to 250 today. And as you can see, we just came up to 225. So I'm closing down the air intake. That way we can stay in that window of 225 to 250. Let's get this brisket on here. Fat side up. Right in the center. 
just gonna watch that fire, add a little bit of wood when I need to, and have a good day. Let's get started. We are six hours in. I've been drifting the temperature up till around 275 because that's where I'm gonna cook once I wrap this brisket, but I'm not sure if it's time to wrap it. So let's go ahead and see where it's at. I'll check temps just to see where we're at, but color's what I'm going for, and I, I think we're there. Yeah, 180. Starting to be pretty soft, too. One ninety five. Oh, okay. Welcome to the wonderful world of cooking brisket. Yeah, uh, decisions, decisions. I'm at one eighty. I was anticipating one sixty, and I've found that Wagyu briskets definitely cook faster sometimes than than a prime or a, a choice. And I think that's what's going on here because we're only six hours in. And I've just started going up to 275. So we've been at 250 the whole time. I'm gonna make an executive decision here and we're gonna go a different direction. I was gonna wrap it, put some beer in it and just finish it off that way. But this thing is beautiful. I mean, it looks perfect. It's getting tender already. So this isn't gonna be a 205 brisket. This is gonna be much closer to two, 198 two, something like that. There's a couple places in the point where it was already 198. And I think the tenderness is, it's, it's already very close. So I'm not even going to put my meat or food thermometer in there. I'm just going to start checking this dude like every 15, 20 minutes until we get the tenderness we're looking for. When that probe drops in like it's room temperature butter and comes back out on most areas of the brisket, that's when we're going to pull it and let it rest. You got to, you know, make adjustments and uh, with a brisket, they, t they have a mind of their own, like seriously have a mind of their own and every one is different. So, you know, you throw it on the grill and see what happens. You gotta be, you gotta be flexible. We're going naked right here on the Lone Star, finish her off. We're gonna have probably, I'm gonna say it's gonna be about an eight hour brisket overall. I was anticipating a 10 or 12, but that's the way it works. Look at that beautiful color. That fat's just rendering just perfect. Since I'm changing directions on this, I'm gonna finish it at 225. I'm gonna put as much smoke on this thing as I can get, and I'm gonna finish it off nice and slow. After eight hours, this brisket was done. That probe was in and out like room temperature butter, no problem. So I went ahead and wrapped it in some butcher's paper, wrapped it nice and tight, two layers, and then a layer on the outside to keep it all bundled up. And I put it in my oven with the oven off and just let it sit for two and a half hours. It's like unwrapping a present at Christmas. Briskets are something else, man. I'm telling you, every brisket is a little bit different and you just never know what they're going to throw at you. And you have to, it's just so important to be monitoring the cook and paying attention to what's going on. You can't forget about it uh, and expect it to turn out well, because the minute you forget about a brisket, something goes wrong. This brisket was at 180 internal after six hours. Temperatures were Smooth sailing all the way through. Started at 225, slowly transitioned up to 275. And usually I wanna hit 275 right when I'm about to wrap it, which is where I was. That's where I thought I was. But it was at 180. It had already broke the stall. 
So if you're unaware, a brisket hits a stall where the temperature doesn't seem to rise anywhere near as fast as it was for about an hour to sometimes two hours. And that's called the stall. This one wasn't having it. I'm slicing brisket four, five, six hours before I thought I would. And so that that's the nature of it. That's one of the things I love about it so much is the challenge. You have to stay plugged in, tuned in, but at the same time, you're chilling in the backyard. So you gotta be careful. You can get distracted fairly easily. Thank you guys for tuning in today. Please share this video with someone who may love brisket as much as we do. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please, I encourage you to do so. Lots of videos just like this. Check out the website, www.delmarvabackyard.com. We got some merch on there. We got some cups, some shirts, some cool stuff going on. So make sure you check that out. We got recipes over there. I hope you guys have an awesome week and I can't wait to see you on the next video.